Welcome, welcome everybody to the AI Global Legends call. I see that we got people loading up. And if you guys don't know, we got Michael Diamond here today. So we're going to have some affirmations and it's going to be powerful. We always do this on a motivational Thursday. So we're going to give it a few minutes, let people load up and um, let people show up so that they can grow up. So if you guys could just let me know where you guys are tuning in from, drop something in the chat so I can give you guys a shout out. And uh, we'll just get going in a few minutes here. Looks like we got the UK in a building. I see Atif over there with the fresh haircut representing the UK. <laughs> Looking cool, man. I like it. Looks like we got Cali in the house, California. My cousin Joseph on the call. Good to have you here. We got Desiree coming in from Kentucky. And... Um, Oh, yeah, you know, we got Karen Kruger, the rock star, the unstoppable Nana, and she's tuning in from AZ land. So this is pretty cool. The land of the scorpions. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to give it a few minutes, let people load up. I see people are still coming in. And um, for those who haven't heard Michael Diamond yet, you guys are in for a real treat today, my friends. Mm. Looks like we got um, a hologram that just popped up from Mr. Manson Jamil, Mr. Yeah. Joe Cool. What's going on, man? You know, man, I'm loving life out here. Out here in the Bay Area in San Ramon. Running a little behind, but uh, that's why you got teammates, you know, to help things, you know, move in a positive direction and fill in the gaps. Absolutely. So, so let me say this one good time. Greetings, gentle ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Ratson Jamil with the AI Global Legends, and I hope you guys are making it an amazing day. And today, we got Mr. Michael Diamond, and you know he stays shining, and I want to stay focused on this. <laughs> so I'm going to pass the torch over to Malik Amir, the one and only. If, he's a, if there's another, he's a phony. Absolutely. And you know... <laughs> We have, we have some really, some really, really special things lined up for you guys today. And for those who don't know, I know that Muslima knows that there's going to be some diamond drops that's going to be coming. And she's coming in from the LBC, you guys. We literally got people coming in from all over the world. Muslim, I see you coming in from Leduc, Alberta. I see, you know, people popping in and out. I see uh, Matthew over there from D.C. coming in from Maryland. And um, I see you over there, Tim Worthington coming in from North Carolina. So we got a nice little lineup here, you guys, and people are going to keep on popping in. And, um, you know, I want to introduce Michael Diamond today for those of you guys who don't know who he is. I mean, he's a world-class trainer. He's someone who is uh, very, very well respected. He's also a world-renowned motivational and inspirational speaker. He was uh, mentored by Les Brown, and he's somebody that you guys definitely want to pay attention to because this guy usually charges about $10,000 an hour just for people to hear him speak, and he comes over here and does this for the AI Global Legends so that you guys can, you know, continue to grow and continue to blossom and bloom, and, you know, so you can be able to, you know, take what you want and snatch it directly from the lion's mouth, so to speak, right? So with no further ado, I want to introduce you guys to Michael Diamond, and I'm going to let him go ahead and take the stage for you guys. Thank you very much, Malik. I'm very excited excited. I'm so excited to see all of you guys. I just want to give a shout out to Malik. Malik, um, I just want to thank you for all your integrity, all your hard work and character. You guys are in great hands to have, um, you know, team partners and team captains with the quality of Malik. Um, his heart is as big as Texas. His character is as sharp as attack. Um, his heart also is infused with uh, a servant's heart. And that's, that's a beautiful thing because Malik not only shines like a diamond, but he won't move ahead unless he brings along those, like Magic Jordan, like Magic Johnson, he makes everybody around him better. And Malik, I'm just so grateful for your friendship. Much love to you. And I'm just privileged to be here with you guys today. I've, um, 
I've entitled this series, uh, I'm a series teacher, I'm an international motivational speaker, master sales trainer, and expert in personal development. My objective when I work with you is to help not just change your life, that's, that's not enough. My objective when I invest my heart and time in you is for you to have a pure transformation, total transformation, um, likened unto a, a caterpillar. You know, we all kind of start out as a caterpillar, depending on where we're at in life. You know, we, we're, we're crawling over circumstances. We're, we're pretty much vulnerable to our predators. Uh, we're crawling over the sticks and the rocks, at, if you will, as an analogy as to circumstances. But at some juncture, at some juncture, if you're not eaten by life, if you're not destroyed, and my, one of my philosophies and one of my affirmations, if you don't give in, you can always win. If you don't give in, you can always win. You know, this is implicable and indicative in um, <clears throat> Oprah Winfrey's life. Oprah Winfrey was fired from her first television gig. They said she was too emotionally attached. And that's what was the cornerstone of her success, her emotional attachment. But she was fired from her first gig. And, you know, not only that, but she... Uh, reportedly, and I, I hope I have this information correct, but she was molested and had some issues and was, you know, had a baby early and had all types of obstacles. And again, like I said, if you don't give in, you can win. But we start out as a caterpillar. But my objective, my objective is to infuse you with the power and to infuse you with um, a dynamite, a dynamism, so that you can crawl into your cocoon and that you can have a pure transformation. And when you kick out of that cocoon, when you kick out of the indoctrinated thinking that you inherited as a child, the slogans and sayings that you say too frequently, uh, the objective is to give you a new mindset, to infuse you with a new mindset so that you can experience pure transformation and become all the beautiful rainbows and all the beautiful colors of a butterfly that you truly are. And that now you're not crawling over circumstances, you're soaring over them. You're soaring them, flapping your wings in life and being able to enjoy and be a blessing to everyone you come in contact with, with all the radiance and all the splendor and glory that's inside of you. Because we all have greatness inside of us. It's just a matter of, are we fertilizing it and are we growing it and are we maturing it? So with that being said, I've entitled this series as a series teacher and trainer and motivator, I've entitled this one to, it's time to step into your future. And when I say step into your future, I want you to step into all of your potential, all of your, all of your strength, all of your glory, all that you have been called to be is awaiting you. You know, I never forget when I first, years ago, when I say years ago, maybe 40 years ago, I was in campaign management. And I believe I shared a little bit of this, but I was, I started here in Sacramento. I eventually went down to Oakland. I had the privilege of doing fundraising and campaign management for John, uh, Senator John Kerry of Massachusetts, uh, Diane Feinstein, Vandy Camp, and a host of other amazing people. And one of the things that I experienced in that, uh, you know, I learned so much from so many people and I had the privilege of helping so many people but at one juncture, while I was with this company, I was only earning $569.69 every two weeks. And I was hungry, like you. I was hungry, and I was unstoppable, like you. And I was ready to fight for more. And so what I did is prioritize my life and said, if I can help enough people accomplish what they want in life, I'll always accomplish what I want in life. And that's what Olympic Arc is about. Olympic Arc is about helping people acquire a greater aspect of health to be a part of the bending arc of this technology. And you guys are at the right place at the right time. I'm telling you at the right place at the right time to shatter through your glass ceiling and make a difference in your life and in your family's life. So, you know, I was taking care of four kids and I, had, I was earning $569.69 every two weeks. So as you can imagine, I was struggling. You know what I mean? Like, I know humble beginnings. Being born and raised in San Francisco, I know humble beginnings. 
And so at that time, I was hungering for more. I was hungering for more. Like many of you, like many of you, I, I was hungering for more. And I'll never forget, you know, nothing ever significant, nothing significant ever happens until a door opens, until an opportunity presents itself. And a gentleman introduced himself to me and told me, listen, I want you to come in and I've got a great opportunity for you to be an insurance agent. And at this time, he told me, look, you could earn $2,000 a week. You could earn $1,500 a week. That was a lot of money to me, $1,500 a week. I was like, wow, this was back in 1992. This was back in 1991, 89, 90, 91, and 92. And so I thought, wow, if I could earn $1,500 a week, that would be amazing. But like many of you, when you go to make that transition and you go to step into your future, we all want someone to chime in and usually the people that we love the most or care most, most about, they really don't want to lose us to, to our dreams and to our aspirations. And oftentimes we're associated with people that don't think the same way we think. And so what happened in my life, like it probably may be happening in yours, I started talking to this partner of mine about, you know, I'm going to earn $1,500 a week. And she kept telling me, You've got a good job now, Michael. You're okay where you are. You've got security. You've been there three years, four years. You're going to make it. You're okay. You'll get promoted. And I want it more like you do. I want it more. And I knew it was time for me to kick that door down. It was time for me to, uh, to transform my life like for you. And I knew that it was hard like it is for you. And success is not easy or everybody would be celebrating success. So I was willing to pay the price. And I, I kept telling her and I kept telling others, listen, I'm going to earn $10,000 a month. You know, in order for you to achieve it one day and you're, for you to see it one day, you got to say it one day. Because what you say is going to be the bridge to get you to that across the other side. And so I started saying, I'm going to earn $10,000 a month. I'm going to earn $10,000 a month. And I kept making that affirmation that if I don't give in, I'll always win. And I accepted the principle that I never fail. I never fail. Because when you fail, it's simply an experience. It didn't work out. Just because it didn't work out, you may be working with Olympic Arc right now, and you're not getting the results that you want. You may not be getting the results that you want. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work for you. It just means that you may need to tweak it a little bit. You may need to make a few adjustments in how you're articulating yourself. Because again, you're only a centimeter away from your success. And if you don't give in, you will always win. If you don't give in, you will always win. And so I kept stepping into my future in my conversation. And so what happens is wherever you're at, you made an appointment to be there. And what I'm encouraging you and inspiring you to do today, because you're unstoppable, you've got greatness in you and I'm proud of you. As I look at your faces, you guys may not see the rainbow of all your success, but you guys look powerful. You look amazing, you look beautiful and I'm so proud of you. But what I want you to know that what you're experiencing right now, that's, that, that, that's not your real reality. And I, you know, it, it was there, down the road was my reality. So what you have to understand is that there are multiplicity of realities. There is, we do live in a quantum physics world. There is a parallel you. And that parallel you is trying to pull you into that new world that is that that you desire and aspire to. So I kept saying, I'm going to earn $10,000 a month. Now, what you have to be prepared for is that there are going to be people that don't chime in. It may be your wife. It may be your husband. It may be your best friend. It may be your dog. But they don't always chime in. And sometimes we all need somebody to encourage us and chime in and and, and tell us it's going to be all right. What I want you to entertain, what I want you to start doing is encouraging yourself. Make your encouragement the most powerful encouragement that you can receive and let everybody else's acclimates and encouragement be icing on the cake. But you learn to encourage yourself. So as I was speaking this reality to existence like you're doing, as I was fighting to transform my world like you're doing, I got socked in the stomach. 
I had a tragic situation happen. So I had to keep speaking this reality. I had to speak my world into existence. I kept saying, I'm gonna transform my world. I'm gonna transform my world. And sometimes we just gotta lean on God. Sometimes we get socked in the stomach. Sometimes it gets hard. We gotta just fall back into the hands of God and know that his all sufficiency is more than capable of superseding all natural events. And we just have to lean back on God and trust God but I kept speaking my world into existence because my objective was to step into my future. It wasn't long. It took about 12 months. It took a season. And after that, I was earning $1,500 a week just as I could see it in my eye. Because I want you to remember this and get it down in your spirit. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible because you're unstoppable, because you're a winner, you're a champion, you've got greatness in you, you're a genius, you are brilliant. And what I had to learn to do was start igniting and waking up the genius in me. I had to start cultivating the genius in me because I had inherited statements like, you're so stupid, God, you know what, I'm so stupid, forgive me, I'm, you know I'm so crazy, oh gosh, I'm so stupid, I'm so crazy. You know, little statements like that, as I shared with you once before, is that your subconscious mind does not distinguish between lie and truth. So whatever you're saying about yourself, I want you to start critiquing every word that comes out of your, out of your mouth. You're like, oh, Michael, come on, I gotta start working on me, yes. Because as it pertains to every facet of your life, you are a compilation of everything that you're saying. I remember when I had an issue losing weight, like some of you may be trying to lose weight. I would say things like, you know what? No matter what I eat, the weight doesn't come off. And the weight never came off. I would say things like, no matter what I eat, I seem to gain three or four pounds. My subconscious mind was giving me exactly what I said. And when I started saying that my life is transforming, I don't earn less than $10,000 a month. I want to give you a diamond drop. The diamond drop is that when you speak it, your subconscious mind will put you at the right place at the right time, bring the right people and the right resources to accomplish your objective. Just like God said, let there be light. We are made in his image and we have to speak forth our reality. Our words are the, are, is the chisel to hammer in and to chisel out the world that we want for ourselves. So you've got to speak that life, whatever it is that you're believing for, that you're gonna help 30 people this month, that you're gonna help five people this month, that you're gonna help five people transform their life this month. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna be because you're saying. You know, all of this makes me think of a movie and a story about a guy named Rudy. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Rudy, but the movie Rudy is an amazing movie. It's about an unstoppable guy like you, an unstoppable person like you. Rudy had a childhood friend named Pete, and they worked at this at this uh, at this iron mill. And you know, and, and you know what's interesting is that he believed in his heart that one day he was going to go to Notre Dame and that he was gonna play football at Notre Dame. And you know, what's interesting is in that movie, they, this, uh, I think it's Sutton, the guy Sutton, he says, you know, you're a hundred nothing, you wait, you're five foot nothing, you're a hundred and nothing, and man, you would got the nerve to be complaining, you got a great education, but Rudy refused to give up his family, his daddy, who did I say? His daddy told that boy, you ain't go, you're dumb. A Rudikers, his name was Rudiker, Rudy Rudiker. It's like Rudikers don't go to college. Rudikers don't go. Sometimes there'll be um, people of significance to tell you that you can't accomplish your dream. You might have had some bad experiences. You may have had some abuse. You might have had some issues. You might have had humble beginnings and somebody took advantage of you or somebody significant told you. You're never going to make it. you just like your daddy. You ain't going to never make it. You ain't going to never amount to nothing. But that's not your real reality. 
Those circumstances that you might be experiencing are not your real reality. And no matter who kept telling this young guy that he was not going to Notre Dame, he kept walking around telling everybody, I'm going to Notre Dame and I'm going to play football at Notre Dame. And that's the tenacity. That's the arrogance we have to have. I mean, not a negative arrogance, but that's the confidence. That's the indicativeness we have to have. Because if you never give in, you'll always win. And Rudy refused to give in. Rudy was telling everybody, I'm going to Notre Dame. In fact, his teacher, one day they were taking a trip to Notre Dame, Notre Dame, and he was about to get on the bus. And, and the guy stopped him and said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, your grades, your grades aren't where they should be. Somebody is always going to stop you like they did Oprah, like they did Henry Ford. Henry Ford believed that he would invent a motor. And when he went to the industrialists to invent the motor, they laughed at Henry Ford. They told Henry Ford, nobody can do Come on, man. They threw it in the garbage. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. A lot like the Wright brothers. But they continue to step into their future. They continue to tell people and make their affirmation. And they could see it in their mind. Can you imagine inviting, if the Wright brothers were your brothers and sisters, they're your brothers, could you imagine inviting them to the family reunion? Like, oh, come on, mom, come on now, don't invite them. Come on, don't invite Wilbur and them. They gonna be at the family reunion talking about we gonna fly one day. We still riding horses. Come on now, mama, don't take them. Come on, come on, man. Come on, come on now. But I'm telling you, if you have the courage to see it and have the, the, the tenacity, the, anacity, the audacity to say it and then believe it. If you see it, say it and believe it, you will receive it. Because if you don't give in, you will always win. And Rudy refused to give up. One of the things I love the most about Rudy is after he had finally decided, something significant happened in Rudy's life. His best friend, Pete, got killed. I want you to reach into your memory bank and remember that your memory bank is designed to, to, for you to recall experiences. Your imagination is for you to paint your future and for you to create your future. So you've got to spend time in your imagination. You've got to see it and then say it and then believe it and you will receive it. You'll receive it like Oprah. Oprah was noted for saying one day, I'm gonna be a billionaire. Oprah now is a billionaire. Tyler Perry, worth over $2 billion. A dynamo was, was known to say, I'm going to do skits. I'm going to do plays. I'm going to do it. And when you hear his story, he kept getting beat down. He kept getting disappointed, like you might be getting disappointed. He kept having adversities and setbacks, like you might have adversities and setbacks. He kept getting socked in the stomach, like you might be getting socked in the stomach. But as I said to you, if you never give in, you will always win. He kept speaking his reality into existence. And now Tyler Perry, like you, is a dynamo. See, inside of you is something that you can't even fathom. Inside of you is something so amazing, so beautiful. You just have to have the audacity, the, the, the titanium to speak it out. If you have the ability to speak it out, it will come to pass. Rudy sat at that, he sat, he was at the Greyhound station on his way, on his way to Notre Dame, only to discover his dad, his daddy told that boy, his daddy told that boy at the, at the Greyhound station, son, you're dumb, you're dumb, and you can't play football, okay, that's it, I'm just going to tell you, he wanted, he was trying to spare him the pain and the agony of the feet. But I'm here to tell you, unless you're prepared to, to take the pain, there'll be no gain. You've got to be willing to step out in faith. You have to have the courage to speak it out, as you do. You have to have the courage to do that. You have to have the courage to know that it's possible that you can live your dream. You've got to start speaking out that I'm a genius. I want you to ask yourself, when is the last time you called yourself a genius? I want you to ask yourself, when is the last time you called yourself a genius? I call myself a genius every day. I need to let my subconscious mind know that I'm calling on my genius. I'm calling on greatness. I always say, 
I'm speaking the right words at the right time to be effective and super successful. I'm speaking the right words at the right time to be effective and super successful. I'm speaking the right words at the right time to be effective and super successful. I'm thinking great thoughts that support great ideas and I'm getting great things done. I know that if I keep pressing and I keep pressing, as I shared with you before, in the confrontation between the stream and the rock, who wins? The stream, because persistency and consistency is the sandpaper that'll sand away any obstacle in any mountain in your life. So like Rudy, he sat there and his daddy told him, you're dumb. You're dumb, boy. You're dumb and you can't play no football. And after hearing all of that from a, an authority figure in his life, he got up and got on that bus. He stepped into his future. My question for you today is, do you have the courage? Yes, you do. Do you have the courage to step into your future? Do you have the dynamism to step into your future? And stepping into your future is the courage to speak out what it is that you're believing for. It's not enough to think it. Thinking is not enough. Thinking is great. Thinking is great. But you've got to speak it. You've got to speak it. When you visit my website, one of the things that our vision is to reach a billion young lives through love, hope, and encouragement. Somebody told me, Michael Diamond, why didn't you just go with a million? Why didn't you just say you want to reach a million young lives? Because that wasn't enough. I'm believing for a billion young lives through love, hope, and encouragement. It reminds me of when I kept believing after earning $569.69 every two weeks. I'm telling you, I was scraping pennies, telling folks, hey, I earn $10,000 a month. Some folks that knew me personally would say, man, you don't earn $10,000 a month. You don't even earn $2,000 a month. Man, go and sit down by the blind man. You've got to be, you've got to be indicative. You've got to be courageous enough to call those things that be not as though they were. As I shared with you before, Romans 4, 17, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were, you have to have the tenacity, you have to have the courage to step into your future. Rudy went to that, he went to, he went to Notre Dame only to find out he didn't get in. He had to go to Holy Cross. Sometimes when you go for your dream, you get disappointed. And that's where most people fail. When they don't get it, when they have the boldness and the tenacity and they step out in faith and they start saying things around their spouse, to their husband, to their wife, and it doesn't work out, that's when you get socked in the stomach. That's what you have to be prepared for. You see, what I had to convince myself of is that I never fail. And I want you to say that with me. Don't unmute. Don't unmute. Just say to yourself, say it out loud so I can see it coming out of your mouth. I never fail. Say it with me. I never fail. I never, I never fail. fail. Don't unmute. Don't unmute, but I just want to hear. I want to see you say it. I never fail. There you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I want you to say this one with me. If I don't give in, I will always win. If I don't give in, I will always win. Well, it took try after try after try after try, like you. It took heartache after heartache, like some of you. But then, at the end, Rudy won. Rudy got into Notre Dame. And what was so spectacular about the story, which is the indicative of success, if you stay on the path, if you see it, say it, believe it, and receive it, if you speak it out, you will begin to, people will begin to chime in to your fanaticism. They'll begin to chime in. They all began to say, Rudy, 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 like you. Your success, it will come to pass. If you don't give in, you will always win. And if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. If you can see the invisible, you can do, do the impossible. I'm here to share with you today that nothing is impossible. You've got to remember, you've got to know. Nietzsche said, Nietzsche said, if I, if I, if I know my why, if I know my why, I can endure anyhow. You see, Rudy's why was he was going, he was enduring all of this because he wanted to go to Notre Dame. 
You have to have your reasons. You got to etch out your reasons. Why are you doing what you're doing? I know I had four kids and a mama to take care of. I knew that I had to earn a good amount of money so that I could take care of my kids. And I had set my mindset. My mantra is helping families. I mean, that's my mantra. That's what I live by is helping families and transforming worlds. That's my mantra. You got to, you have to acquire a mantra and then you have to be strong enough to say, this is why I'm doing it. You've got to etch it out because when it gets hard and it's going to get hard, when you get socked in the stomach and you're going to get socked in the stomach, you've got to know why. You've got to have your reasons. You've got to fall back on your reasons. Your reasons are your rod and your staff to get you to the other side. Your reasons are your rod and staff, just like, just like Tyler Perry when he was doing events and he'd set them up and then a storm would come and then he would come back to his reasons. You've got to set your reasons. Your reasons are your rod and staff when it gets hard and when it gets ugly out there and things. When you set appointments and people don't come through, when you set an appointment and, they, and you think you're going to help another family and they don't show up and you're devastated, you've got to understand that's a part of it. It's just called life. It's going to happen. It happened to me. It's going to be some peculiar, crazy circumstances that happen. But you've got to commit to yourself. You've got to have your reasons. You've got to see it. You've got to know to yourself that I'm unstoppable. You've got to say that to you every, every day. You've got to say, I'm speaking the right words at the right time to be effective and super successful. I'm speaking the right words at the right time to be effective and super successful. I'm thinking great thoughts that support great ideas and I'm getting great things done. You've got to speak that out. You've got to say the right people are coming into my life with the right resources that I need to be successful. You've got to call them in. You've got to call your success in. And then it wasn't enough to earn $1,500 a week. I entered uh, another door open because I started saying I've got to earn at least $20,000 a month. And that's when I got into the mortgage industry. I thought, okay, if, I, if, I, if other people are earning this kind of money a month, I can do it. So I started getting into the mortgage industry. I wanted to get into real estate. And it wasn't long speaking that world into existence that I was earning $20,000 a month. I'm here to tell you that the impossible, if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. Write that down. If I can see the invisible, I can do the impossible. Because everything that you are right now is what you've seen. Everything that you are, every part of your life, everything that you are, all of your accomplishments are a compilation of a door opening, what you're seeing, and what you're saying. It's just that simple. And if you can step into your future, it's time for you to step into your future. It's time for you to speak your reality into existence. It's time for you to transform your world, speak your world into existence, it's time for you to know that you have titanium, you have titanium courage, that you are stronger than you've ever been, that you are a genius, and that nothing is impossible for you. You have to start speaking it out. I mean, people get, I, I, see, I've attracted powerful people in my life, and we say it to each other. We look at each other and say, nothing is impossible for me. Nothing is impossible for you. So I want you to know that if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. I want you to know that if you see it, say it, and believe it, you will always receive it. Just like Oprah Winfrey, just like Tyler Perry, just like Rudy, who was five foot nothing, a hundred and nothing, and turned out to be the superstar at Notre Dame. And I'm telling you, remember that your life, you're the author. So whatever role you're playing in your life, no one's writing it but you. You're the author. You're the director. So if 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 you have a if you have a um, a victim's mentality, that's the that's the role you've written for yourself. So you have to write the role to say I'm unstoppable. You have to have the courage to say, and you have that courage. You just have to tap into it and say I'm unstoppable. I'm invincible. I am. I'm a winner. I always win. If you never give in, you'll always win. And never, 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 never give up on yourself because 
it's possible for you to live your dream. Know that you need your reasons as your rod and your staff. You need to see it, say it, believe it, and receive it. As you step into your future, as you run towards your dream, know that you are the one and that it's possible. You can do this. And I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you because I believe in you. As I shared with you before, it's kind of funny, but most people, most people don't like their nose, toes, hips, or lips. But you got to fall in love with yourself. You got to fall in love with yourself. You know, you got to say to yourself, I love myself. I'm, you know, I feel good about myself. You know, during the day when I get socked in the stomach with circumstances and bad news and, you know, sometimes things happen and sock Michael Diamond in, in the stomach. And I say to myself, I'm, I'm in love with myself. I feel good about myself. I feel good. Try it with me. I feel good about myself. It releases great energy inside you. It releases endorphins when you say positive things about yourself. So have the courage to say, I feel good about myself. You know what? I'm a winner. I'm a genius. You know, we, we don't say things like that about ourselves because it, we don't want to sound, you know, we, we get, you know, indoctrinated. So we don't want to sound arrogant. We don't want to sound conceited. We don't want to, no, 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 no. When you hang out with the winners, that's how they talk. When you hang out with the LeBron James, that's how they talk. They talk like winners. When you hang out with these great quarterbacks, they say, man, I'm winning this game today. I'm going out there and we're crushing them. You hear those great defensive players? Man, I'm going to break somebody's back today. Man, we winning today. You've got to have the courage to speak it. And once you speak it, your subconscious mind will put you at the right place at the right time to bring it to manifestation. So I want to close with this. It's time for you to step into your future. It's time for you to live your dream. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. If you never give in, you will always win. Have your reasons intact. Know your reasons and solidify them. And then begin to say things to yourself like, wow, I'm losing weight. I'm really losing weight. Oh, my goodness. Wow. You know what? Unexpected money is coming to me. Oh, my gosh. Unexpected income. I'm just and be looking for it. You know, we used to have dogs when I was a kid. And whenever you go get that leash to take them for a walk, they just start spinning around. They get excited. They're ready to go. They just get so excited because they know they got that leash. So they got a spirit of expectation. That's what you have to have a spirit of expectation that it's going to happen for you because it will. You have to speak your reality into existence, speak to your world, create your world, step into your future, see the invisible. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible and know that you're unstoppable, that you're invincible, and that you're everything you need to be to accomplish your dreams. Again, ladies and gentlemen, like Rudy, we're stepping into our future. We know that it's time, Malik, this is for you. It's time for us to reach into the lion's mouth. What is the lion's mouth? The lion's mouth is the fear. It's the adversity. It's all the disappointments. It's all the misunderstandings. It's time to reach into the lion's mouth. It's all the adversity that says, no, you can't. You're supposed to live in the projects the rest of your life. No, 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 no. It's time to reach into the lion's mouth. When I was earning $569.69, that was not my inevitable end. I had to reach into the lion's mouth and take what belongs to me. It's time for you to shatter through your glass ceiling, reach into the lion's mouth, and take what belongs to you. Create what you want. Transform your world knowing that if you don't give in, you will always win. Having your reasons as your rod and your staff, knowing that it isn't easy, but it's possible. Knowing that if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. Knowing that you will live your dream because you've got greatness in you and that you're everything you need to be. Call yourself a genius, unleash your genius, speak positive over your life, over your family, expect the best, and your mind will take care of the rest. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael Diamond. It's my pleasure to spend time with you, 
And I'm here to tell you that you can live your dream. The invisible belongs to you, and it's time for you to play a bigger game. My name is Michael Diamond. I love y'all. I'll see you in the winner's circle. Wow, man. That was super, super duper powerful. We really appreciate you coming on there, dropping these diamond drops today, Michael Diamond. And man, I hope you guys caught that. I hope you guys wrote down some of those affirmations because every single morning I wake up and I do affirmations and I'm speaking things into reality. And I remember the first time when oh, Michael Diamond great. actually hey, came great. into my life, you know, Michael Diamond came and spoke power into my life. I actually recruited a hundred people within 90 days after my first interaction with Michael Diamond, right? So it's very, very powerful wow. how he can transform energy and how you can really manifest things and start living your dreams, you guys. So, wow. I mean, I'm super blown away and I really appreciate you coming over here and dropping these diamond drops on us for this motivational Thursday, Michael Diamond. Oh, you're so welcome, Malik. <clears throat> uh, what I want to do is I want you all to, to join hands with me. What I found is being fanatical is always easier when you got somebody crazy to hang out with. You know, when you got somebody crazy to hang out with, it's okay. You know, because I, I was always that person where, you know, if I ran across the freeway, I wanted somebody to do it with me. You know, even when I was a kid, I mean, cutting class wasn't fun unless you had somebody to cut class with. I mean, don't tell my teachers I cut class, you know. But anyway, it, it's always funner when you have someone to do it with and success is that way and I want you to join hands with me join forces with me because my objective if you follow you know if you follow these these ridiculous sometimes seemingly ridiculous tips and suggestions and as much as it might take you out of your comfort zone I want you to start implementing them incorporating them in your everyday vocabulary tell the people around you that they look beautiful tell your spouses that it, that, that if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. Incorporate these in your vocabulary. Very much like I did when I went to medical school. When I went to med school in the military, one of the things, the, the words were this big. All the words were this big. All the words were this big. And one of the things that I loved the most, it, this is one of the things I learned when I went to medical school, also when I took law in college, when I took law classes, one, there, there's, there's an inter, in, interesting, uh, minute, interesting principle. Before you enter into that world, they teach you the vocabulary. You have to learn the terminology. Before you get, you need to learn medical terminology so that when you get into that world, you understand what people are saying. When they say, I'm going to do exploratory laparotomy, uh, tomorrow, Michael, we need to be prepared for an exploratory laparotomy. You're like, what's an exploratory laparotomy? What the heck? You're like, okay, we're going to do a cholecystectomy in the morning. You need to go to the Book of Alexander and Alexander Book of Surgery and get everything prepared, Michael. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. So if you think about law, when you go into law, if you go into a courtroom and you haven't learned the terminology, you won't understand what's going on in the world. When you go to biology, when you go to a biology class, the first thing you learn is the terminology. Well, the terminology of transforming and unleashing your subconscious is what I'm teaching you. So I want you to incorporate it. I want you to get fanatical with me. I want you to employ these principles. And when we meet back together, I want, I want praise reports like, Michael, hey, you know, I tried it. I did it because I had a mentor. Les Brown mentored me. And he used to tell me, he used to tell me some crazy stuff. And I'd be like, really, Les? He'd be like, yes. And I would do it. So I want you to share with this to, through your family, have the courage. But I want to ask you, I want, I want to hear some praise reports about your successes or possibly some failures or what's going on in your life. Uh, <clears throat> Karen, how's things going? Very, very well. I uh, One thing I've um notice so much is as i evolve into feeling better i was working on my digestive track for months yes and because i feel better i'm able to see other things more clearly yes. um for instance i used to have a mess of a budget 
And all I did for years is write down all the debt. And I would sit for hours and focus on it and shake my head and wonder how in the world I was ever gonna get through that. Uh, within the last year, I got some help from two family members as a big blessing. And I was able to chunk out $10,000 worth of debt and pay it down. And now I see my relationship with money is totally changed. For instance, year, years ago, you know, I was a teacher and I never even made $50,000. And so as soon as I would get a paycheck, one of the first things we do is go out to dinner or go buy something, you know, as a reward for working so hard. And yes. then you'd run out of money. You know, I'd go down to the last yes. dollar. Now yes. I hold on to it as long as I can and I pay the minimum. And before the next direct deposit, I have several hundred dollars left as a cushion. And then I go maybe pay off something or start on next month's bills and whatever's left I put on old bills. And what has disappeared since I changed the way I look at money and how I think about money. Yes. I now, there used to be this motor would rev up when I got some money. Oh, let's go spend it. That has totally right. disappeared. And if I go shopping, I don't have to spend money. I can enjoy walking around looking at the people. But I was always brought up with money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, who do you think you are, Rockefeller? And I got this right. message that I was not entitled to money. So anytime I really, right. you know, got some money, I either spend it. I didn't do safe things with it. Uh, wasn't really right. reckless, but you know, and I had that when I I brought up three daughters alone for twenty years, and years ago I decided, well, I don't have much money, so. As far as their clothing goes, I'm going to charge all of their clothing until they grow up, and then I'll pay it off. Well, you can imagine how much interest I had to pay off when that happened. But that was yes, just the yes. mindset. Now, I just get rid of a lot of clothes, and I replace one thing at a time, and I don't crave it. You know, I don't hunger for it. Right. I don't, I'm not distracted by shopping. So my whole mindset changed. And I'm able to also do that with food choices. Instead of eating recklessly, I can easily say, well, why do I want to eat that? It's got trans fats in it. I'll eat a salad. But right. um, very hard to explain in words, but it's a total paradigm shift in how I look at how I'm taking care of myself and, of course, my family, because I have grandchildren now. And I, could, I used to buy them each 10 presents each for Christmas, and birthday, and now, you know, they get one, and they're happy with it, and, yes, and so. Yes, you know, Karen, I, I, I'm amazed at, at that experience that you're sharing, <clears throat> because it is just, um, it is just a, a, a mindset adjustment. Money is an emotional experience. Money is something, um, I think it's Susan, she's the, the money woman. Susan, her name will come to me. Her name will come to me. Um, as Susie, Susie Sor, uh, it'll come to me. So anyway, she teaches that we learn about money in our childhood and it has an emotional attachment. And how we spend money is usually attached to our emotional self-worth. And, and we actually run through money oftentimes because we don't really prioritize and take our responsibilities the way we should because we're operating on um, we're operating on a program that we adopted from our childhood. We don't feel worthy or we don't feel that we deserve it. And so we self-sabotage it because yes. we don't feel worthy. So I'm glad that you put things in order. I'm, being, I'm glad that you're finding order. And what I did when it came to money is I learned to start speaking to money. Because money is a, 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 I see everything is a lie. So I speak to everything. Like women, when they're, when you, if you watch a woman while she's doing her hair, she'll be like, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Oh, gosh, I got to do it over again. You better act right this time. Oh, my God, I've been working on that. I'm like, what are you doing in there, woman? I'm in there trying to, who are you talking to? My hair. I'm trying to get this thing right. Men, if you watch men, they're in the car. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Turn over. Turn over. You know, you're out of gas. Come on, baby. Run, 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 run. Come on. Come on. Come on. Turn over. Turn over. You see us out there with the lawnmower. Run, run. Come on, baby. Turn over. Run, run. We have to learn to speak to everything. I had to learn to speak to money. I had to learn to be uh, ridiculous and say things like, money is coming to me. Money opportunities are opening up for me. This mm. month, unexpectedly, I'm going to receive $10,000. I used to say crazy things, but and unless you say it one day, you're not going to see it one day. Everything mm. that you are is a compilation of what you're saying. If you want to transform your world, you got to be fanatical to say it. When those teams win the Super Bowl, they don't say we want to just go to the Super Bowl. They say we're going to the Super Bowl and win. Yeah. And it there's a power in the ability to say it. Just like when I'm having a horrible day and I just feel like I'm going to cry and everything seems to be coming in on me. Out of nowhere, I'll say I feel good about myself. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, my whole chemical my whole chemical makeup changes because mm -hmm. what happens is we get so caught up in our thoughts. Our thoughts become our reality and our thoughts are not our reality. As I shared with you before, Every people, people think 60 to 80,000 words a day, 80% of our thoughts are negative and 95% of our thoughts are recycled. You ever had a situation where you can't, you can't figure out why I keep thinking about this and coming to your mind like, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. So you've got to learn to control your thinking. You got to speak to your circumstances and you got to speak to your money. Because I'll tell you what, if you ain't speaking to your money, your money sure is speaking to you. Your wallet will tell you, I ain't got nothing in it. I'm broke. <laughs> so you got to learn. So that's great. You speak to your circumstances. You speak to your reality. And in every facet of your life, this, isn't, this is relevant for your business experiences, but it's indicative in every rainbow and every area of your life. Somebody tell me uh, how this is impacting you or... Desiree, the last time we spoke, kind of talk to me a little bit, Desiree. How you doing? I'm doing we had a, a week better. off. I missed, I yeah. missed you. I missed you too. Um, yeah, it's some things that have changed. I, um, I'm glad you were talking about money because my son, I was with him early this morning. And uh, this is my son that has the esophageal burn and he had to get on the... Um, Info boost in order to be able to get rid of the pain that he's been dealing with since he was 14 years old. So he's okay. going through a situation right now and he, he's broke. His, his pockets are empty, right? And so okay. for the last three days, I have talked to him. And what you're saying, it holds so true because I saw him again this morning. He said, Mama, I'm sorry, I'm with my grandbabies. They're making a lot That's of That's okay. Let them go ahead. And so um, I told him, he said, well, I don't have, I don't even have a dollar in my pocket right now, but it's okay because I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. I said, well, one thing you, I want you to do for me is stop saying you don't have money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Start saying my pockets are full. Start saying yes. my, I have yes. money in my yes. bank account. You know, yes. and this is what yes. I, I, I try to always encourage my children to, to think that way because, like you said, when we were growing up, it was different. We, we grew up with this mindset, you know, and when you don't have it, it's like, I'm broke, I'm poor, uh, when, how am I going to get my next meal or how am I going to pay my next bill? And so just hearing you talk today is going to continue to encourage me to encourage my children. And it helps me because you just said, uh, if it's invisible, let me see. I wrote that down. Don't say nothing. I want to read this. <laughs> okay, go right ahead. I said, you said, if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. And yes. that is so, yes. so profound. 
So what I'm going to be doing from this for from these, this day forward, I will be saying if I can if I can see the Im invisible, I can do the impossible, and I'm yes. going to reach yes. into that yes. lion's yes. mouth, and I'm going to take what belongs to me, and I'm going to teach my children to, to do the same because they grew up like me. You know, when you're growing up, you teach your children the way that you're taught. You know, right. you repeat things to your children, what was taught to you and what was said to you. So I am working at fixing or rather correcting things a little bit at a time so that it can help them to change their mindset and move toward more positive things when it comes to them creating their life and the life for their children, because I know this is what they want. I have good, my children have good hearts. They're hard workers, you know, but they got that from their mama. <laughs> That's I'm right. That's right. I'm credit for all that, okay? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. But yes. Well, you know, Desiree, I'm glad you shared things that. Things did change. Things did change. So, That's right. And I feel a whole lot better than the last time we talked. So I thank you for that. Well, I'm so glad. I'm so glad because I want you to know that I'm praying for all of you. I'm interceding for you. And I want to just say that you're so right, Desiree. I'm so glad that you corrected your son because if we we are what we say, and if we say, well, I just don't have no money and my pockets are right now, our words are alive and our words have power. And if you recognize it and start paying attention to it, your words are the connector to your emotions and your feelings. So when you say, you know what, I don't have no money, all of a sudden your whole body language, I don't got no money, I don't feel good, you know, I'm broke right now, but it's gonna be all right. But you know, I just, you know, and it starts putting us on a downer. So we have to realize that our words are life, our words, and that's why it's so important that if you, when you control your thoughts, 80,000, 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, 80% of our thoughts are negative. 95% of our thoughts are recycled. That 5% is where we have to start injecting thoughts into our mind, our affirmations, start transforming our world, and then we hold on to a thought. Get a good thought like everything is going to be all right and condition yourself that I'm going to think about this thought for five seconds. And I'm going to think about this thought all day. Every time something ha happens to me, every time something goes on, I'm going to keep bringing that thought back to remembrance. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. Everything is going to transform in my life. You keep controlling your thoughts. You know, because what happens is those negative thoughts are automatic. Those negative thoughts are automatic. And oftentimes, we're programmed with negative thoughts in our childhood, and we don't even realize it. Sometimes we're little kids, and we can't even speak yet. And our mom and dad are having financial issues and they're saying things that are getting in a part of our computer system, our mind, and they're becoming a part of our reality. You know, they're saying things like, I'm broke. I just ain't got the money. Boy, get out of here. I ain't got no money. Like Karen was saying, money don't grow on trees. You explain, what am I, some sort of money maker machine or something? You better watch that money. Money is hard to come by. Money is hard to come by. You better watch that money. No, money is not hard to come by. You just got to get in the flow. You just got to get where the money's at. Money's like traffic. If, you know, traffic is not hard to come by. If you're in a community, it seems like, hey, there's no traffic. Get over to the freeway and try to run across it at five o'clock in the afternoon. It's a lot of traffic. So you have to get around the flow of money. And what you have to do is bring the flow of money and opportunity to yourself. You have to bring it to yourself. You have to create those thoughts. And once you put that thought in your mind, then it will manifest. It will begin to flourish. And just things like breakthrough is happening for me. Breakthrough is happening for me. I mean, money is coming to me. You have to get a little fanatical because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Karen, Desiree, uh, Malik, all of us are fighting with our internal conversation. All of us are fighting negativity. All of us are fighting that, that that's why that Liberty scale is the representative of life. <clears throat> I remember when I used to smoke, I, you know, here's how God helped me stop smoking. 
I was in a store one day about to buy some cigarettes. And I said to myself, would I buy a carton of milk that said on it, warning, Surgeon General has determined that drinking this milk is will create cancer. I said to myself, I wouldn't buy that milk. Why am I buying, why am I buying these cigarettes? Why am I buying this alcohol? Why am I, why am I following these habitual habits? Why? We have to examine ourselves. And once we examine ourselves and we start looking at ourselves, like Karen was saying, you know, I do have a choice. I have a choice what comes out of my mouth. I can say, you know, let me eat some trans fats because I feel I don't feel good about myself. I'm not, let me just eat a bag of potato chips. Let me eat, you know, instead of four, four scoops of ice cream, I'm gonna eat the whole thing, you know, cause I'm miserable. I'm just gonna eat this whole thing. You know what I mean? And then the <laughs> next day your face breaking out and you, you know, your, your stomach is bloated and you're like, you feel horrible. And you're like, why did I do that? Because we all have this process. There's either the will to live or the will to die, the will to win or the mm -hmm. will to lose. We're either addicted on one of them. We're either addicted. I want you to write this down because I want you to look at it. I'm either addicted to success or I'm addicted to failure. And I want you to gauge all your activities within that funnel. <clears throat> within that funnel, everything you say and do is either a reflection that you're addicted to, to success or you're addicted to failure. Everything you say and do falls into those categories or they fall into these two categories. You're addicted to living or winning, or to living, living or dying. Everything you do, everything you eat, you have to ask yourself, is this, am I doing this to live or am I doing this to die? I never forget my mom was dying of cancer and I went to the church and I asked the pastor that was there to minister to pray for me. He asked me this question. Does your mama want to live or does she want to die? And I'm thinking, what do you mean does she want to live or does she want to die? And, you know, part of her really, you know, wanted to die. Because if you're drinking scotch, smoking 20 cigarettes, taking pain pills, you really want to die. You're miserable. You're hurting. you got to understand that we've got to heal. We've got to heal healthily. And sometimes people die of a broken heart. She lived, <clears throat> but her habits said she wanted to die. So you have to remember, are your words speaking life or are your words speaking death? Are your, life, are your words and your actions saying that you're a winner or you're a loser? It's like running late for all your appointments and you say, hey, I'm, all, you know, I'm just, I'm just always late. Well, no, somewhere in there, you're trying to lose. It's like, you know, I had an associate that told me, you know, I got a DUI about <clears throat> six months ago, about eight months ago, about eight months ago, I got a DUI. Um, and then, and then I see, you know, he's still drinking and driving. So I'm like, you don't want to win, you want to lose. It happened to me. I was hurting so bad. I mean, because sometimes things happen and it's, it's a fight to get negativity out of your mind. It's a challenge. And I know raising four kids, my oldest son will be 44 this year. My baby is, I can't tell her age because if I tell her age, I'll be in trouble. But, um, and then I've got eight grandkids. <laughs> She watched this and say, Dad, you said my age on TV. Wow, she might hit me. But then I got eight grandkids. So, you know, I started like my daddy. I saw my daddy 25 years ago stop smoking and drinking. He's 85 years old and he looks great. And I'm thinking, man, I look great at 85. I want to see 95. So we have to, we really have to run it through those funnels because what to get addicted to winning. Every morning I would ball up a piece of paper and throw it in the garbage and go, two points, I win, I win. <laughs> Do little simple stuff that gets you addicted to winning. And then every time you do something healthy, you gotta be like, yes, I am about life. I'm really, and you gotta, 
you got to get motion to it. Motion is what ties it to your memory. When you see them going, yes, everybody remembers Michael Jordan jumping in the air with that last shot and going, yes, it's a poster. Oh, yes, yes. It just ties us. There's something kinetic to movement to our memory. So when you eat a good salad, go, yes, I'm into life. Oh, yeah, that's good. And your body will start reacting to that and wanting more of winning. So run it through those funnels. Everything you say, I'm so stu stupid. Is that life or is that death? Because I'm not stupid. I'm so clumsy. Is that life or is that death? Because I'm not clumsy. I just knock something over. You don't have to make excuses for yourself when you kick yourself, when you're walking around the side of the corner and you kick the bed and go, oh, my God, God. Oh, I'm so clumsy. You don't have to say that. You can simply say, I won't do that again. You have a choice with your words. You have a choice with your actions. Start addicting yourself to success. Start addicting yourself to life. I'll close with this. There's this great scene in a movie I love. It's called Pretty Woman. It's got to be way up there. I mean, I love that. I love that movie. That movie's a movie of transformation. I was talking to somebody one day, and I said, have you ever seen Pretty Woman? It was like, oh, that movie about a hooker? It's not a movie about a hooker. It's a movie about transformation. It's a movie about transformation. And just to make a long story short, I love the scene when Richard Greer, she's sitting on his facts, and he tells her, you're sitting on my facts. And he says, she says well, that's a new one for me. And then he says, she's trying to get him to indulge in just having a glass of champagne. Very simple, have a glass of champagne. And he says, I'm high on life, can't you tell? I'm high on life, can't you tell? And I love my life because I'm high on life. I don't, I, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, I enjoyed smoking a good joint. It just didn't reflect life for me. I had to run it through the funnel. Is drinking a pint of scotch every night, is that life or is that death? Mm. You know, and I, I don't, con don't condemn drinking. I think anything in moderation is healthy. Just for me, I have an addictive personality and I have to be careful. And we have to be honest with self. We have to be honest. Do I have an addictive personality? Do I eat too much? If I pop that bag of potato chips, am I going to eat the whole thing? We have to learn to be honest with self. Even when it comes down to the choices of words, when we're speaking to potential clients to help them, are, am I speaking life? Am I speaking death? Am I speaking success? Am I speaking failure? Am I being condescending? Am I being uplifting? We have to run into those funnels, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so Diamond, Diamond, you can keep dropping and I'm dropping, right. you know? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Jamil, I can hear you. Diamond, Diamond drops. As you see, I'm still on the road right here. You know, I'm just tuning in to you guys, man. This is amazing. You got amazing drops that you're dropping us, man. I mean, you want to get fanatical. You want to find the fanatical people. They're always at the top of the line, front of the line. And I feel that we're right. at the front of the, of the line right here, guys. So that's why we keep, you know, giving you guys this value so you can keep the transformation coming. And that's what it's about, mindset, transformation. And that's what happens, yes. you know. You just build success mm -hmm. on top of success and help others do the same. And so, you know, we're, we're at the top of the hour. You know we um, respect everyone's time. And I want everyone to unmute their line now and give thanks to Mr. Michael Diamond for sharing his passion, his wisdom, and his experience with us. Thank, thank you, you very Michael. much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, thank you. so much. I am in drops. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. If you can see like a great boost. You can do the impossible. I love you guys. My name is Michael Diamond. I'll see you in the winner circle because it's time to play a bigger game. Okay. Love you guys. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace, Peace and blessings, blessings everyone. And Peace Global and Legends. Blessings. Peace and blessings. See you next time. Keep coming back.
Drop, dummy, drop, dummy, drop, dummy.